Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar on the articulation short course. It's fantastic to have people joining and you're very welcome to just sit back and listen. I'm not going to bring anyone on the screen unless they specifically ask to do that. And this session is also being recorded. So if you watch some of it or all of it, you'll also get sent a link to be able to watch the recording afterwards. So because it's sort of set up as a webinar, I'm going to go through some information at first, according to the sort of dot points that I put in the advert about today's webinar. And throughout the webinar, you can actually ask some questions. Now you might see on your screen that there's a chat button and there's also a raise to hand button. So as I go through, you're very welcome to type a question in the Q&A. And if I see that pop up, I'll either read it and address it to the group or I might type an answer afterwards. But we will aim for at least the last 15 minutes, if not more, where people can interact with me and ask some questions as well. So I wonder how articulation skills play a role in your life. I wonder if it's part of your job, whether you help people on a day-to-day -day basis, and that could be preschool age children, could be school age, or it might be older, like in high school. If you already have a job where you help children with their speech clarity, and that could be in a childcare centre, could be in a school, might be as a disability worker with any age range, it could be be you know right up to high school or even adults if you wanted to just sort of type you know who you might work with now if you don't currently work with someone you might be interested in this course because it's something you're thinking of doing in the future perhaps you're you know looking at improving some skills or broadening your skill base and then you can put that down too so yeah thank you I can see people are putting in so Emily is a primary teacher and doing a master's in special education so this is just fantastic in terms of fitting in really you know well with that Emily so fantastic and Cheryl is a special ed primary teacher K to six students yeah again I'm sure every day <laughs> speech clarity is part of what you're having to do and we've got Kirsty mum of four kids and you know isn't that part of what parenting is, is helping your children to speak clearly and uh, spread, you know, right across a range of ages as well. Fantastic. So with the course, I have designed it specifically for people who find themselves in a situation where, you know, they'd love to maybe have a chat with a speech pathologist or have the speech pathologist in the room with them and say, look, I'm helping my own child or I'm helping a child I work with, with their speech clarity. And I've got a question. And, you know, it would be great to sort of interact. So the course has that in mind of, I've thought of the sorts of questions you might ask, and then I've taken time to really tease apart how we learn to speak when everything is going well, and then the sorts of difficulties that children or older people might encounter. And I know that for some of you, you might have access to a speech pathologist, and therefore this course could just be um, complementing the knowledge and the skills you already have. But for some of you, it can be frustrating because, you know, we know over the past few years that waiting lists have grown for speech pathology. Um, as a speech pathologist, you know, I find that really frustrating too because I've had to have a waiting list for my service and I wish I didn't. But part of developing this course three years ago was in recognition of that, that people can't always get into speech pathology straight away, or there could be other obstacles to getting in. But actually, I think everyone from a mum or a dad, right through to the teachers and the people that interact with children every day, we all have some great skills and some great sort of sense of intuition of what to do. So that if, you know, someone comes up to you and they say they want to play with their Lego blocks, but they call the blocks box, and they might say, Lelo, I've got a Lelo bock. I wonder what comes to mind if, if a child comes up to you and says, I want a Lelo bock. Do you instinctively go, hmm, I'm going to think about what they have said, Lelo, and what they should have said, yellow. Okay. I think they should have said a Y, like a Y, but they've said L. So I'm sure that a lot of people are instinctively sort of doing that. And then they're like, well, what do I do now? Do I help them with all words that start with y? Or do I just work on that word? And then look at block. And if we look at this one, blue. So blue 
and block both start with b and all. So what if they're saying a boo bock? I'm sure you're probably nodding and going, yes, <laughs> I've heard kids say that, a boo bock. And you know, it can be a bit hard to understand, can't it? So if it's a boo bock, but we want them to say blue block, I wonder if you kind of go, well, I'm gonna think about what they have said and what's missing and then how to help them. So this is one of the reasons why I wrote the course and I'm having it on offer to people is I think that you're out there in your roles and in your homes actually doing this stuff already. So yes, it can be wonderful to refer a child or an adult to speech pathology and it can be wonderful to communicate with the speech pathologist and say, you know, where's the program? How do we do this? But I wanted to create a course for people that already have a lot of skills and that this is going to help them to have their instincts, but also have some strategies. So I hope that's sounding like the sort of thing, you know, that you were maybe after. So with the course, it's not accredited, although saying that we are applying for NESA accreditation and we're really looking forward to being able to therefore open it up to early childhood teachers and school teachers so that they can actually get their points. But some of you that know about NESA would know that a lot of hoops to jump through. But actually, I've been teaching other courses in schools for two decades. And as you know, that we can still do professional learning, even when something isn't accredited. So this is an informal course, but I do structure it in that you do 12 topics and you do a quiz at the end of each topic. You send that in and I actually give you feedback. I assist you to get to the point where you achieve 100%. A lot of people get 100% the first time. Some have a couple of goes afterwards, and then you get a certificate of completion at the end of each topic. But the idea is that it's a very practical course. So you're gonna be able to use the skills and knowledge straight away in your roles, in your homes. But also I think you're gonna find it fascinating because you're gonna go, oh wow, I do do that when I speak. I mean, speaking is one of those things that we often don't analyze until something isn't working. So just like with walking, you will just get up and walk across the room. You don't really think about I'm putting all my weight on one hip and then on the other. Same with speaking. It can be a fascinating journey to actually learn a little bit about that um, as you go, yeah. So Emily said, if we use this course for an elective PD for teacher accreditation, how many hours would it be worth? So if this is coming under the the side of your PD, which is not the NESA approved, but it's the other PD that you do, then um, I guess I don't know the exact answer from your angle, but I can tell you that this is 36 hours of study across the full course. That's for people that are taking roughly three hours per topic. Some people might extend that out a little bit, and I have got some extension topics. So I guess it would be a case of you looking at under your elective PD how many hours you can put towards something, whether you can put the full 36 or whether it's a limit of say five per a course or whatever. But that's a great question. And I might actually follow that up so I know for next time. So if you, at the end of this webinar, you're like, yeah, I think I really would like to do this course, then I will email out to everyone the course guide, which has more of the steps and the request to enrol form and you can sort of get underway with, you know, seeing if you can enrol in the course. When I say request to enrol, it's because we do check that each person is suitable to do this course and that their expectations match the, what the course can do for them. And also that you have the necessary sort of hardware and language abilities to undertake the study. As you're listening today, if you have a colleague or a friend who you think might also be interested, then there are other free webinars like this coming up uh, that people can enrol in over the next few days. Let's have a look at the Moodle screen. I'm bringing that up now. So when you enrol in this course, you get given a login to Moodle and Moodle is an online learning platform. What's fantastic is you can do it on your phone. So everything that you're seeing now can also be done on your phone. So if you're perhaps a parent or you're someone that finds yourself, you know, in a car waiting to collect someone or you're waiting for a meeting to start, you can go onto your phone 
and see where you're up to and you might go, well, I'm up to a handout that I have to read or I'm up to a short video I have to watch. And I love the fact that it's these online learning platforms now, they're so portable, aren't they? <laughs> so you can see down the side here that this course is called How to Deliver an Articulation Program. And it's a flexible delivery, which means you are flexible in how you do the course and when you do it. Some people wait till the school holidays and do two or three topics in a week. Some people like to do one topic per week, which is sort of what I recommend. But I'll let you know, as uh, people have done this course, and last year we had quite a lot of people enrol and complete the course, on average, people took one to two weeks per topic and could log on and off, um, you know, as it fitted their timetable. So we can see that there's 12 topics and you can see those down the side, you can come in and out. So um, if you get a login, you'll have this access. If we come down here, we can see that each topic has 10 items and you go down and complete the items in numerical order. You tick the box as you've completed an item and some items, there's a sort of condition. So you can't just jump ahead and go, do you know what? Jane, I know you've done 10 items and you probably had a good reason for that, but I'll just go to item nine because I'm, I'm in a rush. Well, it's not going to let you because I want you to do the steps in the order I've put them because I've, you know, really thought about it. So it has that in there as well. And if we have a little look here at module one, just so that you can see an example of what you would be getting if you did enrol. The first thing is you read a handout. And it says done because this is my example and, and I have done that. But we're not going to go through every topic today with this much detail, but let's just look at the first one. So the handout is a one page information sheet. The purpose is to think about some introductory information to get you thinking about the topic. And then I'm saying leave about 15 to 20 minutes so you can read it and think about it. Some of you might do this in five minutes because that's just your style. Some of you might come back and you know, bring it up from time to time because you really want to digest the information. And I'm saying you, you have to do this before you get to the main part of topic one because it's some prerequisite learning and thinking, okay? Now, if we click on this here, it's going to bring the handout up. So if we look at this now, we can see that it's called an introduction to topic one and it just goes through some different things that you would read, which I think are important. So let's just look at the very first point and then I'm gonna stop the share for a minute. If someone asked you what speech sounds are included in spoken English, what would you say to them? Would you just recite the alphabet? And if you said yes, would you be saying, hmm, spoken English has 21 consonants and five vowels? I'm just going to stop the share. So in the chat, if you want to have a go typing what your answer would be now, your instinct. If I said, oh, I'm going to teach you about the speech sounds of English and in particular Australian English. Would you say, oh, great, I'll be learning about 26 sounds. Or do you think it's more than 26 sounds? Now, some of you working in schools or preschools might have a reason to know this. And some of you might go, oh, I've never thought about that. Does anyone want to have a go? <laughs> Typing in what it would be. Sarah said more than 26. I can tell you, you're right. Kirsty's going, well, I thought it would be 26. <laughs> so this is like um, with learning to walk, you know, you can do it. Doesn't mean you've analyzed it. Emily saying 60 th something. Yeah, well, guess what, Emily? In some languages, like the most, I think there's one language in the world that has 117 speech sounds in that one language. It's like clicks and trills and all sorts. Yeah. So in uh, this course, we find out that there's more than 26, but I'll tell you, it's less than 50 in Australian English that are speech sounds or phonemes. So this first topic just sort of gets you thinking about that sort of thing. So yeah, 44. Now, someone's on the on the mark there. <laughs> well done, Cheryl. It is 44. <laughs> and it's actually 24 consonants because what about things like sh and v and 
the sound in the middle of measure. Do you want to all say measure? What sound do we make in the middle of the word measure? Now, I'll give you a clue. If you try to type it, you're going to find it hard because there's not even letters in our alphabet for the, for the sound. It's a zh. Can you hear that? Mm, eh, zh, uh. So we're going to even learn about phonetically how to encode or write something like zh. We'll go back to our Moodle topic. So you can see why that handout now, it's not just a quick skim, is it? It's actually more than that. It's reading the handout and getting you thinking. Can you see down the bottom here where I'm circling? ZH or that funny little symbol. Zh. Okay. So we're going through Moodle and we're looking at what you would be enrolling and learning about. You've, re you've read your topic one handout and you've ticked it. And then you come to the topic one video and each topic has a video. And in this video, which it says it goes for 17 minutes, it's going to cover some of the information that you saw in the handout, and then it's going to extend it a little bit further. And again, you need to do this before you go any further because it's sort of getting you thinking. After the video and the, the handout, you're now going to attempt a worksheet. And I'll just bring that up. So again, some of you would go, well, I've brought quite a bit of prior knowledge to this course and that's wonderful and some of you would go I've never thought of this stuff but it's fascinating if you were to write an answer to question one list the three articulators described in the video well you haven't watched the video but what sort of things are on our mouth or in our mouth that we use to articulate sounds do you want to try saying zh, zh. what part of your mouth are you moving? So if you've read the handout and you've watched the video, I would say you would easily just rattle off what the three articulators are. If anyone said it could be lips, that's right. See my lips move. And then the second question is the vocal folds or vocal cords are found where? You're going to be able to find the answer to all of these questions in the first two bits of study that you've done. You get the worksheet and you have a go. You don't have to send that in to anyone. No one's going to mark it. But item eight, you'll get the answer sheet and you mark your own work. And it's actually about you being able to look at what knowledge you already have to do with articulation skills and what knowledge you're starting to gain, if you get the idea. So that's why I think this course is suitable for those of you with a lot of experience and looking at you know some of the reasons you've come on today. Some of you would have a lot of experience with helping children speak clearly, helping them hear those speech sounds and translate those into reading and writing skills. So you're gonna be able to use the knowledge you have, then you're gonna be able to incorporate some new knowledge. And straight away, you're gonna be able to go and start using this. So you might think, I've never thought about the sound in the middle of measure or treasure. It's in Asian, it's on the end of beige, and it's at the start of words that are a bit sort of Frenchified, so like soup de jour, can you hear it? Jour. You can straight away go and listen for those sounds in the people that you're working with or in your children at home. And then we have the topic one tutorial booklet. So for each topic, remember there's 12 topics, there's a booklet. And some of you might like to work with your booklets on the screen because that's your preference. You don't really want to be printing things all the time. And you can do this fully on the screen. Some of you might like to print this and, and have your own folder as a resource. And then this booklet I'm just scanning through. I always put the handout as page one so that if you print the booklet, you've sort of got everything all together. And then now you can see there's new information and this forms the body of topic one. For example, you'd learn about the manner and the voicing. So if I circle around here nasals, you would probably all go, oh yeah, a nasal sound would come out your nose. Mm, mm, mm. But you may not have heard the word fricative. 
even though you're probably aware that some sounds have a hissing sound like and so we go through and look at how to describe our speech sounds. The booklet has some things just to read and look at to be able to refer to with pictures. It has some activities. And again, some people might like to print this and fill it in by hand. That's always my preference. Some people are happy to just fill it in on screen or just to fill it in in their imagination and just sort of think, yeah, I, I can see what she's coming at there. Some things here you can actually print out and put up like a, a poster if you're wanting to remember the details. And then there's a little chart at the end. And all of this stuff you have permission to print, not to circulate to other people, but to maybe put up in your classroom or to use with little activities. So you're getting some resources as well. Then the main part of topic one you'll be ready for now, and that is the topic one self-study video. I've filmed these partly from just filming, sitting in front of my computer and imagining I have an audience, but some of the footage I actually do have participants in the background and there's no breach of confidentiality, but there's a sense of interaction now. Some of you might go, I'd really like to do that in a live interactive way. Well, last year we had a school that enrolled 10 of its teachers and every week for the whole term, they did actually do that part, step five, as live interaction. So if you're thinking that's the way you'd prefer to learn and maybe you represent a school or a work site, I'm very happy to discuss that with you. But the majority of people do this fully self-study and they just play the video. And as I'm saying, right, everybody, a bit of tissue, everybody, we're going to make a sound and see what puff comes out of our mouth. Well, you can be sitting there, <laughs> even though there's no one around and and you're like interacting with me. So it's as close as you can get to live interaction, but it's fully self-study. I had a funny little anecdote about that. Um, someone told me that they used to do the self-study while they were at school and they were in a, a shared learning space and they said they'd be there, you know, or leaning into the screen, doing things and they'd get some interesting looks from their colleagues. <laughs> So yeah, it is interactive. Okay, I'll just pause for a moment. Um, any questions so far about Moodle or about sort of the computer technology that you would need? Feel free to type that in, but for a lot of you, it's probably quite standard, especially um, how we're also familiar with Zoom now, aren't we? So, you know, you just need access to a computer. Um, smartphone is great. With the booklets, some of the booklets, we do suggest that you, you know, print it out and write by hand. And we still offer a free service for anyone who requests it. When you enrol, you can tick that you would like us to post you any of the pages that we recommend be filled in by hand. And we print them in colour for the interactive sort of worksheet ones. We print them in black and white just for the basic sort of quizzes. We can post that out to you at no extra cost. And then when you come to do the activities, it's all there for you. Or you can choose to just go on Moodle and print them off yourself to fill them in, or even to mark up your screen if that's within your capacity. If you don't have a printer, it won't prevent you from doing the course because we are happy to post out anything that ordinarily would need printing. Okay. Topic uh, item six is where you just update Moodle with uh, that you have done that tutorial and how you accessed it. So you let us know whether you just did it by self-study or whether you actually were part of a group. And then item seven is a, a supplementary item. So some of you will find that you're learning so much that when you get to the supplementary item, you're like, ah, <laughs> I don't want to take on any more information, but you might want to come back to it. Okay, so uh, it's there for people that want to come back to it. But some of you might go, do you know what, Jane, everything I've learned, it's certainly reinforced my existing knowledge. And I have picked up a few things, but I'd really like to explore in even more detail. And that's what item seven is for in each topic. So here, for example, is at item seven, here's a resource, you can come on and you can print that to use. 
and it actually goes through each of the sounds that you've now learnt about and it's a little resource you could print and use in your classroom or use with your children at home. So I've tried to build in flexibility for people to engage in the course at the level that's right for them. Uh, number eight is where you see the, the marking, which I'm going to stop straight away because I don't want you to know the answers, but you can see it was there. And then we get to the fun part. And I think the really important part of each topic, which hopefully sets this course aside a little bit. It's not a passive course. You can't go, oh, I did that articulation course. And actually you were on Netflix the whole time and it was just playing in the background because you need to do a quiz and you do send this in to me. And at this stage, I, it's me personally that marks it and interacts with you. Uh, as the course grows, I have some other people who I've trained up to become markers as well. But the aim is that you can do this quiz. It's not designed to trick you, but it's designed to check that you've processed the content. So here for the topic one quiz, by the end of topic one, I'm saying that you'll be able to look at the phoneme it's the fricative. Do you want to all say that? And the phoneme b. Do you want to all say that? B. If you've got a tissue handy, otherwise you can just use your hand. B. Can you feel a little pop there? B. P. Or oh, the p is a bigger pop, but b as a little bit. I'm saying at the end of topic one, you would be able to describe how and b are different, how we could contrast those phonemes. And then I'm saying that you could talk about how phonemes are the same. So with the quiz, if you've requested the printed booklets be sent to you, you'll have the booklet there and you'll fill it in. Otherwise you can print it off Moodle. So we're saying here it's a one page, it's a PDF, I'd like you to fill it in by hand, but you can mark it up on your computer screen if you know how to do that. And then you just take a photo or a scan and you email it to me. So it's going back a bit old school, but I like the process of you being involved. And actually, you know, sometimes with a quiz, if, you, if it's printed and you've got the pen, you know, you can be thinking about it, you can change it on the page. So I do encourage people to do it sort of old school. You email it to me, I mark it, and give you feedback. And I say you can have up to three submissions to get it 100% right. So I'll interact with you back and forth. And once you have it 100% right, then you get the, the certificate. And that's roughly what the certificate looks like there. Once you get your certificate, you click done. And on your topic checklist, you would be able to see that you've completed all of those items. Then you're ready to move on to topic two. With the quiz, I find that some people get it 100% first go and they still have learnt something uh, from the course, but you know they, they are very confident with their quizzes. Quite a lot of people have one or two little things and they'll go, oh yeah. And I will, the first time I'll say, I'll just point out the, the item, which I think would be good to repeat. The second time I'll give you some hints or clues. And if by the third time you're still struggling with something, I'll jump on an email and say, hey, would you like to Zoom with me? Would you like to email? Would you like a phone call? Because I want you to succeed and I want to be able to explain things. So yeah, there's a lot of support throughout the course. Like I said, it's just fun to learn yourself. It's fascinating. Those of you who are parents, as well as this may be being to do with a work role, you know, you tend to walk around and try things out on your own children which, um, you know, you can say, hey, come here. Can you make that sound? Oh, yeah, you did use your teeth. You know, so you'll be on a, a really fun learning journey as well as it being very relevant skills. Who is the course aimed at? Yeah, I really did want to aim it at people across a broad range, specifically, you know, teachers and early childhood workers, I think it's fantastic for. We've also had people who work in the disability field. And that could be anything from a support worker to like an early intervention person, someone who runs a, a play group, someone who does family daycare. It's, it's people who every day have a child, you know, say to them, I don't want the Lelo bock, I want the Boo bock. And you're like, oh, I want to help that child. 
Now, part of how you help someone at the moment might be, I must talk to mum or dad about a speech pathology referral. Or if you're a parent, you might go, I wonder if I should refer to speech pathology. Well, I want to take it one step further and say, I think it's within your skill set to do a lot more than you probably realise. And I bet some of you already are doing things like going, it's not boo, it's blue. See my tongue? L blue. I bet you're trying things and having some great success. So this course is to just help you with the next step. And part of that is because of the reality of, you know, speech pathologists, they're hard to come by. It didn't always, it wasn't always the case that um, it was hard to get into a speech pathologist. Although the free government paid services have often had long waiting lists. Uh, but I had a lady who did this course last year and she works in an early childhood center. And she said, Jane, we have so many children with speech difficulties and it's my job to try and help them. And I talk to parents and you know, we try to get on waiting lists, but the waiting list is over 12 months. Well, you don't want to wait 12 months, do you? Now, the child who says boo bock, it might not be such a problem because, you know, they're holding it. But what about the child that comes in and goes, you know, yet the day I banded some bowers in my garden. And you're like, okay. Um, and then you're not quite sure what they said. And then they're like, oh, it doesn't matter. And they walk off, you know. Maybe you don't want to wait because it's impacting their social development. Maybe they're going, no, a bower, a bower, a bower, and next minute, whack. Someone's pushed or whacked. And it's like it's escalating and it's so frustrating. Well, I don't want to say, well, just jump on a speech pathology waiting list. You know, I want you to have skills that you can do something straight away. And it's actually part of our role as speech pathologists to train other people and to give other people skills. Much like if you need a technical medical procedure, you're gonna to go to a doctor, maybe a specialist, but if you're out in the bush and you're with a friend and they trip and hurt their ankle, you're not gonna say, well, I'm sorry, I'm not a doctor. Um, you're just gonna to have to sit there. <laughs> you're gonna go, oh, what would it say in a first aid course? Oh, I wish I'd done that first aid course. Um, hang on, I think we're supposed to elevate your foot. Oh, I might go on my phone. Oh, I've got no reception. Okay. Yeah, I think oh, maybe we're supposed to put a compression bandage. Oh, I must redo my first aid course. So same sort of thing. I want you to have this toolbox of things that you can do so that if a child is frustrated or an adult is frustrated and can't make themselves understood, you're building on your the skills you already have and the knowledge you already have and just being that little bit more refined so in the course, we do actually go into quite a bit more detail. Now, I'm just going to um, just bring up our website. Okay, just getting that ready. And if I share the screen now, here's our All Areas Speech Pathology website. And I'll send you some links to this uh, as a follow-up to the webinar but you can see it's aaspeech.com.au. Along the top, we've got courses and articulation short course. If you come onto this screen on our website, here's all the links for the webinars that are up and coming. And then there's more information you can read about the short course. There's also some little videos that you can watch, but let's just scan back up here, the short course guide. So this document is something I suggest you read through. You can read it on screen or you can download it. And it goes into more details about the course. And I'd just like to now um, go through with you the things that are in covered in the course. So if we have a look here, um, we can see that we've got exploring articulation skills, topic one. Then we go into identifying speech sound errors. When someone says something and there's an error, can you hear there's an error and then identify what's happened? So for example, if someone wanted to play with Play-Doh and they said Bado, you can probably hear it's wrong, Bado, but can you identify what is wrong? Play-Doh has changed to 
Bado. So the p u has changed to a b. Two sounds at the start have gone to one, and we haven't got our soft p. We've got our loud b. So topic two is about actually being able to hear those errors. Topic three, we've got how do we write that down? Now this would be really important if you're in a school and uh, the speech pathologist is coming in two weeks and you'd like to talk to them about it, or you've got a special ed team and you want to talk to your colleague. You want to be able to write down what you heard so that when it comes to it, you go, oh, what did they say again? Did they say Beido or did they say Dado? Oh no, that was Jimmy that said Dado and Mary that said Beido. So you need a way of writing it down. You need a way of writing down the vowel sounds and the consonants. In topic four, we learn about an articulation program and how it goes through steps and how we need to be ready to help a child that learns really quick and oh I didn't think they'd pick it up that quick versus the child that just gets frustrated and says no I said Beto and they don't want to do your activity and you're like oh okay I've, I'm ready for this Jane said that might happen there's actually something I can do that might re-engage this child with the program now I know for some of you that's your bread and butter <laughs> that's what you you do really well so I'll just be giving you some you know alternative ways or some ways to build on what you already do so all of that was module one. And now if we go to uh, the second one, module two, I actually break down working on a program into four different categories. We look at preschool children in particular, and then we look at early primary in topic six, and then older students, upper primary and high school, and then topic eight, is support classes. But I'll just um, stop the share for a second, say you don't need to go, oh, well, I only work with upper primary, so I probably don't need topics five and six, because actually when we say, how do we work with preschoolers, what we're saying is, how do we teach or help with the first sounds to develop? So if you're working in special ed, you might have a 12 year old who's still working on early sounds like p and b and f. so we find that you do each of the topics because then you're going through the stages of development of sounds and I work with some adults with down syndrome and other disabilities and I'm still working on some of those early childhood sounds because that's where they're up to so it's really good to go through each group of sounds and to look at particular substitutions and changes and that's part of what the course does. It does all the predictable things that you're most likely to see. And then in topic eight, when we look at support classes, we look at people with lifelong speech difficulties like a dyspraxia or a coordination difficulty or a sequencing difficulty. And we look at some of those really unusual speech errors and how you might work on those. Okay, go back to the topics. Now, in the third module, we do one topic on fingerspelling and how being able to say things like it's not a p, it's a b, how the fingerspelling can be a cue. We look a little bit at acute articulation as an alternative, but I actually show how there can be real benefits to choosing keyword signing and fingerspelling. And again, that's just a very interesting topic. Topic 10, we look at Great, you've taught them the new sound and they now could say, this is a blue block and I'm playing with my Play-Doh and you're quite proud of yourself because you've helped them. And then they rush out into the playground and, and say, um, oh, I want to get that one. I want the boo one. And they're back to their old way. And you're like, we just spent half an hour learning how to say blue and you had it perfect. And now you've dropped back to boo. And so we actually do a whole topic on how to get those new sounds to generalize. Topic 11 is where we look at patterns of speech errors that can occur and how a specific topic or a specific approach called minimal pairs and how that's really helpful. So it's very much focused one approach that I think you'd find useful. And we finish up with topic 12 on behaviour strategies for reluctant learners.
but actually we've been doing that the whole way through. We've been looking at behaviour strategies all the way through and then topic 12 is just really looking at it in more detail. So do you want to think about that? I wonder if that's one of the reasons why an articulation short course might be appealing for you because you might find, well, Jane, I think I know how to help the students, but they often don't want my help. Now, if you're a parent, you can comment if this sounds like your household, you know, do you ever find that you have no shortage of great ideas, but the children don't want to do your ideas? It's either because they're a bit stubborn or because actually they're a bit scared of getting it wrong or they're just not motivated anymore. And you're like, ah, oh, you know, they used to think anything I said would be great to try, but now it's all their way. <laughs> so I really incorporate that all the way through the course because I don't want to teach you to have all these great skills to work on articulation, but the children you work with don't want to do it. <laughs> and I think, again, that's something that sets this course apart a little bit is because of the emphasis on not only what to do, but how to do it and then what to do when it doesn't seem to be working, how to tweak it a little bit. And I've had some participants say, do you know what? It's helped me to tweak my own learning. Like some of them will say, I'm not thinking now about the child that doesn't want to say the speech sound. I'm thinking about myself where I don't want to go on to Moodle and try that topic because I'm nervous I'll get it wrong. And I've realized, Jane, that it's okay to start easy. So I really go into this whole thing of, we all need to start easy and gentle and build our confidence. And then we need to get into a good learning zone where we're getting things right most of the time. And as soon as something is too hard, we should backpedal and be kind to ourselves or support the child we're working with. So it's a big part of the course is how to engage who you're working with and how to support them. And some of the feedback on those sections, you know, has been very positive indeed. And it's one of the parts that, you know, I, I'm really pleased that I put into the course. Now, in terms of the costs, if we go um, back into the course booklet, sorry, the course guide <laughs> that we got from the website, you can scan down if you download this and you'll see that um, it's got all of the steps, it's got here what to do. It really sort of takes you through the things that I said. It actually goes through the course content in more detail now. So not just the headings, but the things we would cover. So I'd recommend you go and look at that. And if you're maybe wondering if your school will pay for you or your work site will pay for you, then this part of the document might be the sort of thing you show them and say, look, um, you know, this is the extent to which I'll be learning. If any of you work as a school assistant or even as a speech pathology assistant, or you're hoping to put on your resume that you could help children with speech sounds, then, you know, this is the sort of thing like as a speech pathologist, if I were going to employ an allied health assistant or a speech pathology assistant, this is the stuff I'd love them to be able to do. And we have had a few people come through the course. Now we don't employ everybody that does the course, so that's a disclaimer, but actually we have employed a few people <laughs> or we've supported those people to go off and work for other speech pathologists. And actually a couple of people have now enrolled in a speech pathology degree after doing this course because they've loved it so much. And all of this um, is a very good foundation for that. So I'd be happy to speak individually to any of you who are thinking, wow, this has opened up my eyes to, you know, all about articulation and I'm really interested. So you can go through the course content. It's got some examples of how the booklets might look. But yeah, if we get to this bit here, the course options, so this is where um, we can have a look in more detail. And you can see here um, that, you know, it runs for possibly 12 weeks if it's one topic a week, but you can do it faster or slower. And I'm saying that the time commitment for each topic would be about one to one and a half hours for those first three components. Read the handout, watch the video, have a go at the worksheet, maybe do some printing or, you know, get your booklets organised. Then an hour and a half on the tutorial, which you do live or as the self-study. 
and then between half an hour and an hour to follow up, look at your supplementary items, mark your own uh, worksheet, do the quiz, send it in. And for each topic, um, you can choose if you're going to do that self-study and you can just get started straight away. If you really like the idea of being in a live tutorial group, you can indicate that. And if we find a group of other people that you know are all looking for that, we can form groups. But it sort of works better if you have your own group, like a school choosing to do it, because then you can get started you know, pretty much straight away. If you chose option two, then we might find you're waiting for a little bit for other people that want to do it at the same time as you. In terms of the payment options, we've tried to make it as flexible as possible. People can pay per topic. And if you do that, we have an easy debit setup. And then it's basically $70 per week. And you roughly would do one topic per week. And remember that the one topic for the $70 is this amount of time. So it's sort of three to five hours of time per topic. If you do it that way, it's $840 for the full course. But some people choose to say, well, I'll pay in three lots. So I'll pay for the first module and we get you going on module one, the first four topics. And then, all right, I'm ready for module two. Then it comes down to $750. Now, quite a lot of people say, I'll take the option of I'll pay up front. And if you do that, it's $720, which works out at $60 per topic. It's not written on here because we don't advertise it. But if someone said, look, I definitely want to take two or three weeks per topic because I know that I'll learn best. Can I spread the payments out even more? You can spread your payments out. So it's roughly like $32, $33 per week and you can spread it out longer. Um, you're sort of looking at doing it over six months. However you choose to do it, you get access to Moodle for 12 months. So even if you do it quickly and you're all done in eight to 12 weeks, you can keep coming back in and out of Moodle to use all the resources for 12 months. So the information is there. And if anyone in a minute has a question, um, we can talk about that. But basically on that document that was there on our website is the request to enroll form, which you fill out. Now I'll stop the share. Coming up to the end of the webinar, the reason it's a request to enroll and not just an automatic enroll is that we want this course to be something that people recognise has good results and outcomes for people. So as you can imagine, there could be some people where this would be sort of too high level for them. It's not really what they're looking for. Um, and we don't want to set someone up, you know, maybe they don't have a computer or maybe the idea of learning on their own isn't right for them. But for the majority of people, especially people who are used to being on Zoom, who are excited for self-study, and for people that you know work in a childcare or a school or a disability um, location where you're used to this sort of thing, generally the request to enrol it's a bit of a formality. You know we look at your reason, your background. So put a little bit on there, and you know we go yes, wonderful, and come and join the course. If we think someone's a little bit hesitant, or perhaps their expectation of the course isn't quite what the course is going to do, maybe they just want speech therapy for their child. They want someone to do the therapy they're not sort of looking at studying themselves, well, then we might direct them into something else. So that's the reason we have it as a request to enrol. And it means that um, anyone who does this course, you know, is set up for success to complete the course, to get the support, to do their quizzes and to come out the other end, you know, with, with lots of great skills. So if um, I just show you again um, on the website, and here's back to our website. On that page, we have some different things about the course. Find out about the enrolment process. Then here's a bit more detail about the enrolment. And here is download the request to enrol page. So you can actually just go straight in there and download that and fill that out. So, you know, we'd be very happy to get people to fill that out straight away. Some of you might like some time to stop and think. And some of you might want to have a phone call with one of us and just go through some questions. So all of that's okay. 
So um, I'm just going to offer now if anybody wants to type a question or would like to type that they want to come on and I can bring you onto the screen. I'm going to hang around until 1.45. Um, Emily has said, is there one on receptive language? Well, great question. There is one in my head and I'm currently, I've been teaching it to schools. So I have the course that's available. A school can book it now and we can deliver it. But the going on to Moodle, it's going on as we speak. And so this, the second course after the articulation course is all around um, the speech sounds, then going into words, communicating with language, how we listen to the sounds to get going with our written language. And it's all around things like yeah, understanding questions, speaking in sentences, writing sentences. Um, so I'm very excited to be releasing that soon. So thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to keep an eye on the questions there. And I, rather than um, play the little video now, I think what I'll do is I'll show you um, just going back onto um, that website page. If you would like to see some examples, you can come onto here. Um, watch a short video about the articulation short course. That's sort of why I wrote it. But here is watch an example. So I'll just actually. Your work can feel much smoother with Monday.com Work OS. Okay. So I want to just take a moment just to thinking about your questions. Started is she was one of our templates. Your teammates. Yeah, so if you want to just be thinking if there's any questions that you want to tie, um, is the articulation course a prerequisite for the receptive language course? I would say it's not a prerequisite. I think they are two different sorts of skills. And so some schools definitely will say to me, um, we don't want to do the articulation course when I teach them directly. We want to go straight to language. So I would say that for people who've done the articulation course, it would build nicely, but for people that just want to go straight to the language, that would also be fine. That's probably how I'd answer that one. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Well, we've done very well with our timing, with our one hour. Um, just as we're finishing up, you know, why are articulation skills important? Well, it's probably very clear to all of you um, who are on here that, you know, we need people of all ages to be able to speak clearly. When people can't speak clearly, it can impact their social development. It can lead to difficulty with behaviours. It can lead to difficulty with learning to read and write and spell. So articulation, I think, is such a, a foundation skill that we all need, um, which is why I chose it as topic one. Some people are wondering, um, you know, could this course lead to a paid role? Well, in terms of leading to a paid role, the speech pathology assistant role, which would clearly use these skills, it's still a non-regulated industry, as is teacher assistants at schools. If you're in a SLSO or you're in some sort of teacher aid role, it's up to the school or the work site to decide if you have the right abilities for that role. Now, sometimes people will go out and do a certificate for in speech pathology as an allied health assistant, or you know, people will do some training, but it's still not a requirement in Australia. I think what's the most useful is to have the practical skills. So I know of people who have done this course and it has then led to work. So someone did this course, she applied for a job as a school assistant in her child's school. She showed them that she'd done the course and the topics, and now she interacts with me and says, you know, I'm using the things I learned in the course all the time. I think um, for some people, it has led to a pathway where they've become more interested in speech pathology. And for some people, it's led to just one of the skill sets that they have in the role that they're looking for. So it's not a defined pathway, but it certainly is a skill that makes you job ready in a number of the different education and learning industries, particularly in disability now um, with NDIS funding. 
a lot of people who work as disability workers who have done this course say they use it all the time and even the signing and keyword signing and fingerspelling aspect has been very useful for that too so um, another question is you know can i pick and choose and only undertake some topics i actually get people to do all the topics because they all blend into each other and sort of form the bigger picture so at this point if someone only wanted to do a little bit I would suggest that you contact me independently and look at you know is it your school would like to engage some training that's tailored like I do offer a three-hour workshop for a school on articulation or a three-hour workshop for a special ed staff on receptive language so you could you know ask for your particular for your particular interest just in a more condensed way and if anyone misses a tutorial um, when it's self-study it's not really an issue because you're doing it in your own pace if you did choose to join a live group or your school um, chose the option of you know the tutorial part is live i always record the tutorials and people can catch up by watching what they've done thank you for your time I encourage you to go to our All Areas Speech Pathology website now, maybe download the short course guide, have a look at it. But I'm also going to send a follow up email to each of you where I'll have those links there for you. It's okay. just been great to share some of my knowledge. And obviously, you can see I'm very passionate and yeah, look forward to interacting with you at some point. Thanks, everyone. I'm staying on now just in case anybody yeah, would like to stay on and have an individual chat. Otherwise, bye.